franchise Shane Douglas. Welcome to Appalachian Expose. We're laughing because I'm here with, of course, Chase Stevens. We have a little bit of a history. Uh, Just and like, I always tell people, these are easy. So like, we start off with simple questions, like, what's the square root of 376? Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> there's, a, there's a niner in there. <laughs> Thank God, that was my bad subject. But, uh, and I'm going to call Scott Steiner. He knows the, he knows the answer to this. <laughs> so I, th this is like typically how we wrestlers... Uh, cut up in the dress rooms and in the cars. And I always tell the guys on these things, it's just like the first road trip you have with somebody getting in the I'm nervous. I've been on my nails all the way over. <laughs> so, what was it that got you? First of all, how old were you when you started watching wrestling? Man, I. Uh, this, uh, that's a whole story. There's a whole story behind that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't watch wrestling growing up. And I didn't realize I even watched any kind of wrestling growing up until I was already in the business. <laughs> and I had to, I was wrestling uh, Great the Hammer Valentine in Morristown, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And his music played. And he, as he comes out through the door, I had this whole flashback of my dad <laughs> making me sit and watch this match back in the day. And I was like, oh, man. I might have watched wrestling as a kid. Like I wasn't like into it like everybody right. else, but but I and I remember him and uh, Ronnie Garvin having this match, and my oh. dad making me watch it. They made me put all my toys down. This is the real shit. Like this ain't that fake shit you watch. And I'm like, dude, I don't watch this crap. <laughs> but I couldn't say that to my dad, you know. So I just sit there and watch, and I was just like, I, and, and Greg's cheating the whole time with his little with his little shin do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh man, that cheater. Man, that wrestler won't catch you at one point in time, and he didn't. And I was just like, oh, I'm blind ass, you know. I'm like a little kid, like thinking this stuff, you know. He's and then, cheating. Yeah, and then fast forward, I'm in the business, like you know, and I'm wrestling him, and I was just like, and he didn't, he didn't shake my hand in the locker room. He didn't talk to me in the locker yeah, room. Yeah. Nothing. Greg was just great. Oh yeah. And I didn't, I didn't know him. I didn't, I, and I just knew, I just seen where he wouldn't shake anybody else's hand when I walked in. So I was like. Uh, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't yeah, even gonna yeah. bother the guy. Yeah. If he's got something to say, like, you know, I'll I'll be right next to him. Sure. Just I ain't gonna I ain't gonna try to bother him like these other people. So we get get out there and he, you know, of course starts working my leg right off the bat and then calls a spot, shoots me off for a duck one. And man, I just grab my leg and hit the ground. Yeah. Come on, grab me. He goes, What the hell? I was like, he's been working my leg, I ain't running a spot. And he's like, Who the hell trains you? <laughs> so I you know, I give him I give him the Iggy on who trained me and everything, yeah. he's like God damn, man! Like let's let's work a little bit. So he takes me to the corner and gives me that overhand chop I've been hearing about. Yeah, and man, I was waiting for it, and it hit. It was good. It was yeah, good. Yeah. But Ben Wallace chopped me. Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And I was like, <laughs> pussy. And he's like, uh. man, he backs my head up. Oh, yeah, hits me again. Yeah. I'm like, is that all you got? I moved to the other corner. I was like, is that all you got? Moved yeah. to the other corner. He comes around, like hits me again. And he just loved me, man. He's like, uh, yes. he's like, he's like, give me a boot. Shoots me in the other corner. He's like, give me a boot. I gave him a boot. He's like, put your feet on the ropes. I jumped up, put my feet on the ropes. I told the ref, count three, count three. Yeah. And that was it. I mean, we didn't go long. Easy, right? But yeah, the promoter was so mad when I got in the back. Like, what the fuck? Like, I shot on fucking Greg, you know? I was like, yeah. I was like, he said, I, and he comes back and he's like, what? He's like, this is the problem with you guys. You want to build a, a, a town, a, a, a company, that's your baby face. That's yeah. the guy you build off of. Yep. He's like, you bring me in. He's like, I ain't never coming back here. I ain't never been here, and I ain't never coming back here. <laughs> like, he's just miserable, man. I yeah. loved it. But I loved it. That, that, you know, but, just what you're describing. It means he loved you. Yeah, he did, uh, man. Yeah. He really took care of me. Uh, I, I did uh, did a signing. Um, he remember me uh, Re uh, WrestleCon right for Mania. Mm -hmm. I, I went out to the clubs with all the boys afterwards, and my name went on the list after I was invited. Yeah. I get there, all you know. There's some boys behind me, some boys inside. And they was like, I gave him my name. And I was like, nah, you're not on this. And Greg's like three people back. Mm -hmm. He's, I turned around. I was like, all right, whatever. It ain't like I can't go to another bar. Right? Fucking it's Orlando. You know what I mean? Right, I yeah. fucking, I, yeah. fuck, fuck damn. I got Orlando. You know what I mean? So I come, uh, I, I go to step back and, and Greg goes, what's the problem? I was like, oh, my name's not on this list. And he's like, oh, your name's on that list. He takes me right in. He's like, he yeah. just grabs me. Just swap me right through. And he's like, oh, sir, sir, sir. And he just walks straight up. Yeah. Oh, he's like, now, now you're in. Yeah. I was like, oh. Like, I'm trying to sneak in sure. at fucking yeah. 30, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, Turtles, when I, when I first met him, the same thing. Like, the, the slow build, like, the slow to get... But because of in those earlier shows, I was always with Dominic. Yeah. That, like, it was the end for those guys. Uh, and, you know, I've gotten to know Greg really well over the years. Of the, you know, the, the, you know, the slow motion, the turtle, yeah. you know, where you get the moniker. And, but then you also see, like, what you're described. I've seen him do that many times with kids. Yeah. 
you know, so it's uh, but a, a constant pro, right? He he realizes this is you're gonna be staying there working. Uh, imagine that a professional actually being pro in this business, right? <laughs> God <laughs> fucking forbid. Yeah, yeah. Man, I wish we had thirty of him <laughs> at all times. You know what I mean? Like. Then we'd only have three people in the business, and that's all we need. We need right. three extra people. That's it. Like, fuck it. We got so, a full locker room then. So you mentioned that in the ring, you, know, you totally trained you. Who did train you? Uh, Smothers. Uh, train uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Originally trained me, and then uh, Steamboat and, and Kurt Hitting polished me. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. Not a bad little pedigree. Right? I mean, you know, so, you know, I had a, had a little here and a little there. Yeah, you heard the yeah. Tracy uh, Smothers story about the, the uh, riot in ECW, right? Uh, yeah, I'm so many times in the car. Yeah, so it's much the steering wheel. I just, I, I, I was there that night and I saw all the front end stuff of this. You know, I was in the, in the main event, of course, and like a, a match or two before mine, the building goes completely quiet. I'm like, what the, so I go out, it's empty. I'm like, what the hell? They're all outside. I, so they're all outside. So I go back into the dressing room. I get on the, you know, thing, I'm looking over outside, and it's only a scene from Walking Dead. People are walking, holding their hands. Yeah. Big Jason, out there just pounding. Oh, it, it was, it was, yeah. So I see Tommy like right in front of the window. There's a cop with a dog holding the dog, and I see Tommy going like this, like pleading with the guy. Later, found out that he's telling the cop, the cops telling him, "Get your people inside. I'm trying. I'm trying." He said Tommy told me just like seven months ago. Said, uh, "I heard a voice come up behind me. He said, you take the cop. I got the dog." <laughs> I do, mean, Tracy. That's exactly what he'd say. I said, that's yeah. so Tracy, right? Yeah. And he'd have kicked the dog's ass, too. <laughs> I wrestled three grizzly bears, Chase. I beat all three. You know how many times I had to hear that? Yeah. Right before a bar fight, he'd be like, all right, you sit down. Yeah. I wrestled three grizzly bears. I pinned them all. <laughs> I was like, oh, well. God, Miss yeah. Tracy so me much. Too, me too. He was a trip. Really, yeah, he really had so many one-liners. I told him, I was like, man, if you owned a t-shirt company, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have so many millions, I I would be rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, God, his one-liners, man, just yeah. every every second, he'd be spitting them out. Yeah. He'd be like, there's family, just out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, he brother don't know. Yeah. Brother don't know we got wrestling in front of 30 <laughs> people in the night. Just driving down the road, you know what I mean? Yeah. He'd be like, hey, hey, you got any protein? I'm like, ah, uh, no, I got a dollar last night on the show. <laughs> you know what well, you get? Two for one tunas, two for a dollar. You didn't get no tunas? I'm like, we ain't been nowhere to get tunas. You yeah. know what I mean? He'd dig back there and grab this dirty, molded protein cup, open it up, fucking dig it back, and grab these scoops, bring them up, putting them in. I'm like, oh my God, please yeah. don't. Yeah. This, little, this little cup he's going to pee in later on, he's dumping water, <laughs> shaking it up, hand it to me. And I'm put, This is where I'm like putting my thumb over No matter how hungry or thirsty I am, I'm just like, mmm. <laughs> like four hour drive, you know what I mean? Like that. Just every time we'd pull over finally to get gas or something like that, I'd <laughs> a little bit of it out on the side. Oh man. Tracy was the best. He used to do on uh, Tuesday nights, we used to always do, you know, back then it's Weekly Towns. Yeah. And we'd do uh, uh, Birmingham, which is where we lived. And uh, for the longest time, it was at Batwell, and then they closed down to renovate, and it was over at the fairgrounds. So Tracy got himself this motorcycle, right? He's, I've heard this story. <laughs> and everybody it was awesome. So he's he's uh leaves and rides his motorcycle to the show, yep. tells us we're gonna meet back at the the, the the apartment. We get back there an hour, hour and a half, two hours on Tracy. I'm like, what the hell? We're find a girl someplace, what you know? <laughs> Here he comes in and slams the door. He's cut and he's got like stones yep. and shit like this. <laughs> 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 Car ran him off the road, <laughs> and he threw. I said, "Well, where's the bike?" He goes, "I threw it over the hill." Yep, yeah. he was done with it. I think it's gonna kill me, Chase. <laughs> I was like, "You uh, slept it?" Yeah, yeah. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I'm gonna be alive. <laughs> he used to do the uh, well. Yeah, we'll, we'll stay up, stay away. Anyway, the, we miss him. The wrestling business yeah. is Tracy. Yeah, uh, and his fans miss him for sure. Uh, so you you train. I guess what I'm getting at, what was the point that like, you thought to yourself, like, I'm going to make this a profession, I'm going to make a go at this? Oh, man. I, I moved in with Tracy in Tennessee. Uh, I had to get a real job because every once in a while he'd leave me at home. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. So I was like, oh, man, I should probably get a real job. Like, this really ain't paying the bills. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, got, I got a kid and I got one on the way. And I was just like, and things wasn't going good. Like, it was, like, super bad. Like, uh my kid's mom had beat up Tracy's girlfriend. It was a very awkward house that we lived in that we just moved into. And I was like, oh, man, like, I don't know if I could leave these two alone together, but I really need to go try to find a job. So uh, this this other wrestler, Blackie West, like, I can get you a job. Like, uh, 
I waterproof basements. So I was like, oh, well, I ain't never done that. I ain't got a clue how to do that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it sounded like a good job. Nope. That's the <laughs> shits, dude. Like, if there's a shittier job in the world, like, <laughs> fucking, I'm telling you, it's waterproof basements. You got to climb our houses with all these bugs and, and just animals you've never seen before, <laughs> like rubbing on your leg and shit in the dark. You got to dig these trenches. With no like spider webs everywhere, like dude, that is not at all what I had pictured in my head when he said I can get you a job, right? And he's complaining. He's like the foreman, so he's getting like ten times ten ten dollars plus an hour than what I am, you know. And he's like he's a worker, and he's complaining about this. And he's like, you know, he's probably 10, 12 years older than me. Mm-hmm. And I was only there like maybe like four days. And I come out at lunchtime, and I'm just like, I'm just covered in everything but something nice yeah, yeah. and i'm like i take all my gloves and i'm watching them eat their food just miserably with dirty hands yeah. and everything and i'm going this is my future <laughs> i'm gonna be him in 12 years yeah bitching and complaining some other guy got on this job and i was like nah i'm gonna be i'm gonna fucking make it dude i'm gonna i'm gonna make it so i i, I like i'm getting up and walking on he's like where you going kid and i was like i'm gonna be a pro wrestler and he's like, yeah, I said that too one time. Here I am. And I was like, yeah, I ain't coming back. So I just, I walked straight to the car and drove off. I get home and my kid's mom's like, you know, why not that, you know, you, if it's like raining really bad, they let us off work or whatever. She's like, it's not, it's not even a cloud in the sky. Like, I was like, man, I quit. She's like, oh, what are we going to do now? I was like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it, man. I went and started working out again at the gym. Like just, I mean, like. I probably do like four hours at that point in time, like training hard. I did it for like five days. Yeah. Uh, Burt Prentice like called me. He was like, uh, Jared's got a got a deal they're looking at at the fairgrounds. Like, uh, I'd like to have you on this Saturday. So I went down um, with Cassie Riley. We worked uh, Disco Inferno and uh, Sanders, Mike Sanders. Mike Sanders, yeah. Yeah. And first spot. Casty jumps up and drop kicks Disco and breaks his nose on the drop kick. Oh. Tags me in. I go, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Come in. I was like, well, we ain't got a job now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we go out there and we work around, you know, and, and this was like, do not get him back in the ring. Yeah. I was like, I, I, I'm so sorry. He usually doesn't do that. It's, you know, and I don't even know Disco. It's my first time I ever meeting him at this point in time. So we wrestle around, you know, we, we finish all the stuff. And then uh, the Jerry's are upstairs watching us at the fairgrounds and, uh, we went all the way through the show. Uh, um, James Storm and Chris Harris uh, worked on it. And the main event was AJ Styles and David Young. And Disco told me not to do any flips or anything during the match that Jerry didn't like any of that stuff. And then AJ goes out there and does every damn yeah. flip in the book. And I was like, well, I was watching the match going, I can do all that shit. But, man, Jerry comes out serious and he's the first one he signs. And then he signs, da- well, he signs David first. David Young gets signed first. Then AJ. And then, then Storm and Harris. And then... They signed me and Cassidy right after that, mm-hmm. and I and so, so you were I, there from the beginning, from the get legit, yeah. legit first game, like three months before it ever yeah. started. Yeah. So then I go home thinking, I made it. Right, I'm under contract. Yeah, a couple of weeks go by, and I'm like, what? What I do? <laughs> Fucking, is this thing really gonna happen? Like, hold on, like maybe, maybe my dumbass just yeah. signed the wrong fucking thing. So I'm calling Bert Prince, it's like, hey, what's going on? He's like, I swear, this is really gonna happen. It's really gonna happen. Now a month goes by, I'm going, dude. I, I yeah. listen. There's other things I can be doing in my life right now. Like I was already poor. <laughs> now you know it didn't start for another three months. That's a oh, lot of oh, phone calls yeah, I had to make. Yeah. Like dude, seriously, seriously. What the, was the hold up at that time? I don't know. I, I I think I think Jerry was trying to come up with his own money from somebody else, not his right. money. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, how he is. yeah, yeah, <laughs> Jerry, yeah, yeah. Jerry's spending his money on yeah. everything, you know. But uh, he, he like it was just it was just one of those deals. Like, and then they called me and I was like, hey, we got Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> Like to have you on it, you know, da da da, and I drive down, and my name is on the card, and I was like, man, I got worked. I just spent all this gas money I had to borrow to get here because I haven't worked in three months now. So then I, uh, Jerry comes up to me, he's like, he's like, hey, uh, psychosis showed up. What do you think he's gonna make it? He's like, we're paying you anyways. Just we just, you know, you stay behind the scenes and just watch how everything works. Mm -hmm. He's so cool with me on everything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then. uh, then from that day forward, I was on every show after that. So they did those first two pay per views back to back on the, on that Huntsville, Alabama, and then I was on every show after that. So right. yeah. So like, did they from the very beginning keep you as a, see you as a tag team, or did they see you as? Same? They did. That we're supposed to be. So oh man, that's a 
That's a headache and a half. I haven't told you this story. <laughs> All right, so the second time I get there, so the, so the so I walk in the fairgrounds this time, and I meet Russo on the way in. I've never met him before. And Casty has. Casty's like, you know, hey bro, you know, both of them, hey bro. You know, back and forth. Hey, bro, I'm back and Yeah. Forth. And, like, I didn't know how this worked at this point in time. I'm, like, a young kid. Cassie's been in the business, like, a few years uh, than me. And he's he done a couple of WCW shots yeah, and yeah. already met him. So he's like, well, uh, where do we hire you guys as? And we're just like, oh, the hot shots. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we, we want to call you guys the hot dogs, Oscar and Frank. <laughs> and I was like, dude, my face, man. If there had been GoPros back in the day, <laughs> we'd be millionaires right now. Like, my face was like, <laughs> yeah, this is such a rip. I'm looking over at Casty, and he's got a big smile on his face, still shaking his hand <laughs> with his bro. Like, yeah, yeah, I love it. And I was like, fucking love what? <laughs> like, he's like, Oscar and Frank. He's like, oh, we're going to, he's got this water bottle. He's like, we're going to give you guys these big old dicks. We've got these chicks chasing you around. And I, man, I couldn't get Oscar and Frank out of my head. <laughs> I was like, D oh. <laughs> so as he walks off, I was like, is this a rib? And Cassie's like, no, it ain't a rib. This is, like, this is what we're going to do. Big time wrestling. Like, I was like, this is, no. I ain't going to be called Oscar or Frank. And, and fucking, <laughs> dude, hot dog will be stuck with me the rest of my life. <laughs> I was like, you call us a fucking hot dog and fucking forever known. Our grandkids will be calling us fucking hot dogs. And he's like, he's like, I don't even know where you're thinking like that. I was like, because I think like this. This is what goes on in my head when somebody's shaking my hand, call me a hot dog, you know? And he, he's going, he's like, we're going to have these chicks chasing us around. I was like, you're married. And I was like, you're getting a divorce when this happens. So, like, this is our whole conversation, right? So, uh, so I, I bypassed him. I go straight to Jerry. He's sitting back there, like, watching the monitors, like, yeah. spitting in his little cup. Got his six teeth in, you know? Like, and I was like, hey, Jerry... Uh, can I talk to you? And he's like, he's like spitting. He's like, yeah. I was like, listen, I just talked to Vince Russo. He's like, I don't like him. And I was like, oh, okay. all right. Me either. We're already on the same page. So like, I'm like, they want, listen, they want to call us a hot dog. They have Oscar and Frank. I'm like telling this little story. They want us to give us these fucking dicks. And he's laughing. And he's like, what do we hire you guys as? I was like, the hot shots. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I like those hot shots. He's like, uh, what, 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 what's your names? I was like, Chase and Andy, or Chase and Cassidy. He's like, yeah, yeah, okay, I remember, I remember. He's like, man, I, I like those dicks, though. I like that dick. And I was like, shit, I talk too, I talk too much. I was like, god damn it. So they end up giving us these strap-ons, these strap-on dicks, right? And we got these black fucking tights, but we got the strap-on dicks, so you can't see them through these tights, right? So we had to get these neon orange, like, thin material tights. So we get those on, and Casty wears... Trunks, so it just looks like he's got a cup on. You know, mine's the one that comes all the way to the side, right? <laughs> so, the first day, I'm like, I'm like, here, I'm gonna outline mine so it like looks good, you know, like when we go out there, because our 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 whole uh, montage on TV was we're pricks, we're proud, we're protruding, we grab our fucking crotch, right? <laughs> but his just looks like a cup because it goes all the way back to his asshole, you know. So, uh, so anyways, we we get out there and we do our whole spot. And then we was working Harrison Storm, and and Harris always did this uh, spot where he'd, he'd stand you up and do a, a walk around mm. uh, stalling suplex. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I was like, hey, uh, kick me up on the backdrop, kick me up. And I was like, I'll spin around, kick me down, put me in your stalling. I was like, let me get this dick over, you know. So as he's walking me around that fairgrounds, dude, during a fucking Wednesday night pay per view, it's like it's all free tickets, all hand hand me outs, but it's packed. I mean, it's fucking packed. There's like twenty three hundred people in yeah, this fucking building. It's jamming. Yeah, as he's walking me around, the whole place is dead silent, and this one dude goes, "He's got a boner," <laughs> and they all start chiming together. He does, he does. You can just hear it. And then they start going, "He's got a boner." <laughs> He's got a boner. You did the big time, dude. dude. I was like, put me down. Put me down. He's like, nope. I'm like, right here in his ear. He's like, nope. Goes walk me around again, dude. If you watch me on this pay-per-view. Me throwing my legs every direction known to man trying to get put down. And that's when he's like, jack. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's a fucking, Chris Harris was huge at that point in time. He just watched me around with a smile on his face. I was like, you motherfucker. I'm like in his ear. I was like, I'm kicking the fuck out of you. <laughs> when you put me down. When you put me down, it's so good. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, uh, I had the boner story <laughs> during my, my uh, you know, like my second pay-per-view out there. And how, how did that come off? Uh, <laughs> Aside from when I'm strapping it into Yeah, well, how did it, the gimmick it, come off? It, 
that's as far as it went. We we got put in with uh, Sports Entertainment Extreme uh, SEX at the time, and uh, our co our contract was only for four days. Like once they started, we, they yeah. just wanted to do a tryout run. So our four days had come up. We went to WWE, did Raw and SmackDown, and then come back for the Wednesday pay per view. So we did Monday and Tuesday Raw and SmackDown. Then we come back for the Wednesday pay per view, see if they wanted to re-sign us. And we had so much heat. For doing Raw and SmackDown, then we had to work the Harris Brothers, and, they, <laughs> and it was like supposed to be a you know just a nice little match that we did. Nah, we get in there and like I'm jaw jacking with the crowd, and I turn around and Cassie's giving one of those plastic chairs like tossed in the air, like broke over his head, and I was like, oh man, they didn't call that in the in the at the opening of this. Fuck it, man. I turn around and and it's uh Ron coming at me, but I didn't know him apart at that point in time. I mean, I just booted him right in the face from the apron. Like I jump off, I was like, "Oh, let's go, let's see what you got." He's like, way, he's like way tall." I'm like, "I look like fucking Mike Tyson's punch out." I'm like a little Mac, like hitting his arm in the air. Casty grabs onto me, and throws me over the guardrail, and he's like, "Go!" I'm like, "Go where?" He's like, "Do the exit." So like, we go out the back exit, and like cameras like following us. I'm out there going, "What the fuck's going on?" Like he's all bleeding and shit, like like not on purpose either. Like, and he's all sitting down Indian style. All calm and shit, and I'm like, I'm ready to fucking take on the world at this point in time. He's like, I think we're fired. I was like, fuck, fired? I was like, man, I'm about to beat the fuck out of those big motherfuckers. <laughs> I was like, come on, right? So I was like, I'm gonna walk around there and fucking tell him. So he's like, no, 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 just let everything cool down. Let everything cool down. So then we go around, that's when I meet Bob Ryder. Bob Ryder like grabs onto me as I'm coming in the door. He's like, what happened? I was like, man, my partner just got his fucking ass handed to him in the ring. I was like, that's what happened. I was like, I'm about to beat the fuck out of these big dudes. <laughs> And he's like, he's like, uh, that's probably not a good idea. I was like, what happens if I do? He's like, I don't know. Maybe they'll give you a job. I don't know. Maybe they'll hire you again. I was like, well, fuck it. Where are they at? Where are they? Yeah. He's like, yeah, you're not making it to their locker room. Like, just sit down, calm down. Like, let's get this together. So he ended up resigning us right, right there to another contract. Uh, just because, I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, he's just like, because uh, I had fired him. Yeah. I was ready to yeah. go. I was ready to fuck fire him, like, dude. Yeah. And, so, and so, like, how did uh, you start off with Cassidy? Yep. And then where's Man, uh, so Cassidy, uh, he lived in Louisiana. They were trying to do cutbacks. Cassidy wanted flown in because that's like a nine-hour yeah, drive, yeah. and we wouldn't get paid enough for, for trans, hotel, things like that because I lived right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I moved down with, with Smothers at the time, so I, I wasn't that far away. And Cassidy was asking for a flight and things like that, and then they was like, well, yeah, you know, <laughs> they're the bottom of the total pool. A like, flight at that point would be like 30 40 bucks. It's, yeah, that's too much. That was too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they was looking at about five dollar range. You know what I mean? Like, so, so yeah, they they left Cassidy at home, and then they they told me to find a new partner, and I was like, I didn't find him. And I was like, fucking you, motherfuckers! Like, like you gave me everybody, you know. So, I was like, I, I was like, man, I don't know who, you know, this and that. So, Burt Prentice like brings in Andy Douglas. Uh, Bob Ryder sees him. He was like, where was Andy originally from? Uh, Moorhead, Kentucky, right over here, okay, like, right close to us. Yeah. And so I didn't know this at the time, though, but I'd met him at Kingsport, Tennessee, years prior. And, and when I say years, like maybe like three, I hadn't been in the business that long. This <laughs> yeah. time. And he had, he's, I've been in longer than he has, but he he looked like uh, he had blonde, like like bleach blonde hair, wearing the Jeff Hardy sleeves, yeah. same wing boots as Jeff, and had the baggy pants, and did a swanton for the finish. Right, <laughs> and I'm there, with, I'm there with Henning. So when he gets on the back, uh. I, and Henning's making me drink, so he's like making me drinks on the back, and so I'm like, I don't like how I am right now, but this is like this is when I was an athlete, have my shit together, yeah. you know. <laughs> so I was like out of my fucking mind, man. I couldn't even fucking reach the curtain. It's like a, it's like an exorcist, like trying to get to the curtain. You know I mean? But Andy comes to the back, and I was like, hey, where's Matt? And he's like, who? And I was like, tag partner Matt. You know, that's I. I don't know if Andy remembers that or not, but that's how we met, yeah. right? So shake his hand. I make fun of him a little bit more. And then a couple years later, um, uh, Terry Taylor brings us in and is like, hey, this is your tag partner. Like, if you can gain uh, 30 pounds in the next 30 days, we'd like to put you on TV. <laughs> Telling Andy. I was like, he ain't gained 30 pounds in 30 years. <laughs> but we're only like 22 at the yeah, time or yeah. something like that, you know? And I was like, he ain't gained 30 pounds in 30 years. I was like, we ain't going on TV. I just walk out the door because I was like, man, way to fucking bring me in, make me drive all the way down here, and then you guys just give me this. We ain't going nowhere. So, like... They give us like a date for the next month. Uh, it's like the beginning of the, just say the beginning of the, the month or whatever. It's a Wednesday pay-per-view. We come back and Andy, I think he gained 50 pounds. Motherfucker looked bigger than me. <laughs> Jack to the gills. I was like, 
Jesus Christ, he made it. Like, he grew a whole nother leg. Like, fucking, he looks like Pitbull. I look like a sausage fest over here. Just like, fucking, I should have been a hot dog. You know what I mean? Like, like just, just send me the fuck home, man. I'm done with this shit. So, I'm asking, I'm asking Andy, I'm like, hey, where are you getting your shit at? <laughs> like, so, uh, so we ended up wrestling that pay-per-view, and then Bob was like, uh, what do you guys got playing tomorrow? And we was like, ah, oh, man, I mean, we, don't, we ain't got anything planned. He's like, He's like, I got a, I got a uh, deep sea fishing boat in uh, Louisiana. Would you guys like to go down and go deep sea fishing and get to know each other? And I'm like, I mean, yeah. Man, it's so much heat on that drive down with no cell phone. And my kid with, uh, or my mom, my kid's mom with two kids at home, not knowing where the fuck I'm at. Dude, she thought I was like arrested, dead, you know, fucking business. And I'm fucking in New Orleans having a great time. Fucking, I'm on this fucking fishing boat I've never been on before. I've never been on the ocean. Like, I'm out there trying to swim with fucking, I didn't understand, man. They, they gave us like 12 hooks. Out and, they got their own, like, dude, Bob's got his own captain, he's got his own first mate, yeah. things like that. I don't know, I don't even know what that means in life. <laughs> right. Like, they're throwing their poles in, like, bringing in 12 fish at a time on these on these poles, and not giving me a pole. I was like, you guys like my dad. You guys just go catch all this shit and go home and tell everybody, fucking, we caught these. Yeah. I know how this works. Like, so I'm just, I'm already hung over a little bit, so I go downstairs and, like, sleep because he's got fucking four beds on his, I, it's a yacht to me. Yeah. Like, I don't know, hey, a fishing boat, it's a yacht. So, so, uh, the next time we stopped, they had, they had uh, chopped all those fish up into uh, chum, mm -hmm. and now we got big hooks. And now we now we got to put these seat belts on and shit. And I don't even know what was about to happen, man. <laughs> yeah, we we caught some some. I didn't know tuna. Tuna comes in a can. Yeah, I didn't know. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm so glad I didn't jump in the water. Like, <laughs> I was like dude, I'm in the ocean. I'm jumping in the water. No, I'm so <laughs> glad they stopped me. Uh, we had this guy, Lord Humongous, not not the original. We had a different one, but hey, man, he looked just as good yeah, as yeah. the old school Lord Humongous. Yep. His name's uh, Ryan Wilson, and was he, he? They were trying to use. Well, they kind of did use him a, a few times on the on the pay per views and stuff like that. But he was so jacked and like probably like six eleven. I mean, wow. just a big boy, dude, yeah. man. And he is. It's like he's trying to reel in a VW bug from the <laughs> bottom of the ocean, you know what I mean? And he fights this thing for four hours and gets it in, and the, the captain jumps jumps down off his seat and comes sliding down these stems, pulls a gun out, starts shooting the water, and kills this shark. And I was like, oh, the shark is yeah, but I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on, dude. It was like a it was like a mafia fucking hit. <laughs> it's like shooting in the water. <laughs> Don't get in the water. <laughs> uh, I didn't know what he's saying. He's speaking a different language. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on in my life? And I, I loved every minute of it now that I think about it. Yeah, but yeah. at that point in time, man, I was just a lost puppy dog, man. Like, sure. I was just ready to go, you know, swimming off the docks in the middle of fucking whatever ocean yeah. we're in down there. Like, so, like, uh, when did it become apparent to you that you and and we're going to be kept together, and, and the whole natural thing. Who, who, whose idea was Well, we come up with natural heat, because both of us, from the get-go, Terry Taylor didn't like us. Yeah. So I was like, man, we already got heat going on this. So we come up with natural heat. And then on that on that drive down, we stopped at a Cracker Barrel. And everybody kept asking us, because we had Lord Humongous with us. Mm -hmm. He's so big, and then we look different, you know, yeah. than everybody else in town. So, <laughs> man, really? there's, man, yeah, right? So there's like, man, there's probably like, I don't know, 55, 60 fucking old ladies, old men, old ladies, like, standing there waiting, you know, getting autographs off of it, just off their napkin. We didn't, yeah. we didn't have pictures yeah. or anything like that. And Bob was like, I've been, I've been to eat with Ric Flair multiple times in life, and it's never like this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, it's so good. But the more I signed Natural Heat, the more I was like, man, my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's go Nats. Let's just yeah. go Nats. We don't need no heat behind it, man. So, so we just went Naturals, you know, like, yeah. it was easier for us to sign. And, uh, yeah, and that was it, man. We, we connected from that day forward. Uh, we said, that, that second pay-per-view we did, then, then promoters started hitting us up. Yeah. And we started just booking out. And we got booked out the whole year right off the second pay-per-view. Yeah. And what time for that? Or the second right? pay-per-view of me and, me and Andy together. Yeah. That would have been, you know, two. That two? Yeah, it was, I mean, so they started in 02, right? Two or three, I'm not sure. I... Bob Ryder had contacted me in 2003 the first time. Okay, so it might have been three. It might have been three. Me and AD connected. It might have been the same week you come in. Is that right? Yeah, seriously. It was like super close. Yeah, because 
my honest impression when I first got there was that you guys looked well tuned together. Like it looked like you guys had been together for a while. Yeah, that's what that's what Bob that's what Bob thought. Bob thought we had been working together for years, like yeah. on the Indies. And I'm like, dude, I met him like like a few years back and made fun of him. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. So the uh, jump forward a little bit here. Uh, so the whole Chris Candido thing. They they had come to me and asked about. Chris. Huh? Well, you know, my feelings about Chris, he's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, you know, for obvious reasons, if I give him my endorsement, he comes and he's like he had been. Uh, <laughs> get us both Yeah, fired. right. So I said, I told uh, 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 Jerry, let me fly up, you know, give me a ticket, I'll fly up. Because if he's still using, and I knock on his door in the yeah. afternoon, he'll, he'll be lit, right? And I got there and he opened the door and he's completely in phenomenal shape. He went, Franchise, the hell are you doing here, right? And pulls you, pulls me in, and I, I called like an hour later. I said, hire him. You know? Yeah. So the idea was to to manage you guys, right? Yeah. Now, from your position, like, what were you guys being told at that spot? We didn't. We weren't told. Dusty told us when Candido got there. Mm -hmm. So when Candido come in, they told us like, uh, he's like, he's like, uh, you know, Dusty was like, uh, I love the Candido baby. He belongs with the Naturals. So. Uh, and Candido was like so like laid back and cool. I had never met him at this point in yeah. time. Nandy hadn't either. And we shook hands. We, we talked very, very little. Right. He's like, let me know what, what I need, if I need to do anything, anything like that. And I'm like, man, we usually just call it in the ring. We don't really go over much. Even on TV, we didn't. We'd right. let the baby faces call everything. But, sure. And we just, we just do what we do. Fill in, yeah. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, that's cool, you know. And then here we go, you know, we're there all day, showtime. And, He's like, you guys got anything? And I'm like, man, we're going to feed, feed him to you a few times, you know, this yeah. and that. And, and we get out there, and I'm like, calling, I'm like calling Iggy to him, something like that. And he's doing the trip and, and things. Mm -hmm. And there's a few times I had to say it a couple times to him. And he he would he would get it, you know. It, it, but he, I didn't understand. I thought, he, I was like, man, he's probably not hearing me. So we got done. And we, man, as soon as we come to the curtain, he grabs onto us and gives us this hug. He's like, he's like, that's what I missed. He's like, I was so entertained by the you guys being the, the heels yeah. and real baby faces mm -hmm. and having the crowd really involved right. that I forgot. I was I thought I was watching again, and he's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was missing. And he's like, I, did I miss it? I was like, No, you spot on. Like we, you know, I'm, I'm watching eyes, so I always know like I know what camera's on. I know what right. you know what where to be at on things because uh, sometimes and you get turned around. Sometimes I had to you know position you a different yeah. way. You know, sometimes just. And, but he was good at finding the camera too. Like Andy was always really good at things. Just every once in a while, I could see a deer in the headlights, and I had to call something for him, you know, yeah, from yeah. the corner. But but that, other than that, man, it was just like it w the only thing we ever uh, choreographed was the other people's stuff. So anything that they would say, we just had to make sure we was there timing wise to feed in mm -hmm. for different things, you know, because you can't yeah you can't get the baby face over. Just I mean, you can, but a lot of them have to call it in the back. Right. They don't know how to sure. really work and call Iggy's. Were you guys uh, prompted at the front end of this? Like, man, can't do it coming into the belts we're going to be putting on you guys. No, not at all. So, not till that day. Yeah. So the, uh, that, that's the way it was pitched to me, which is why they flew me up there. And I thought it was a phenomenal idea, right? Yeah. I mean, Candido's phenomenal. You guys had great talent at, at the stage you guys were at. It was time to go to that next level. And Chris was phenomenal at doing that kind of stuff. Uh, how long had you guys been together? Uh, Chris as your manager when the uh, rather than just explain what happened and I think I think in in all reality of everything of the tapings and things like that as it went I think they split that out to like almost a month and a half two months but we'd only we'd only been together three weeks three it was months, just yeah. double double tapings mm -hmm. at a time you know what I mean and then we'd skip a week and then we'd do a double taping so I think we got almost a month and a half out yeah. of everything with the interviews and a match mm -hmm. and Double interviews and two matches and how they, how, you know, how they did everything. Mm -hmm. So we really went together all that long, right. but, but that, those few, you know, three days for two weeks being together, man, we just it, it just so it, man, so he, his knowledge and his, <laughs> you know, just for, I didn't I didn't realize his age I didn't until he passed I, yeah. I didn't look it up you know what yeah. I mean and and he's so young for having so much knowledge right. yeah. you know what I mean yeah. and. And Smothers always put him over, like put him over huge all yeah. the time. So I felt like I knew him before I knew him. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, and but he was like, it, even you know the the break is 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 uh, ankle and 
the surgery we had to have. So Sunday pay-per-view was the break. Monday surgery. Tuesday uh, we had TV. And he has to... Uh, we can't fit his wheelchair up the backside. I remember right? that. Yes. So they, they had just they had these weird pipes coming out of the backside of the ramp for no reason. It was just yeah. for looks, but the camera never shot down. It always mm -hmm. just shot up the ramp. Right. So there's no reason for those anyways. But we couldn't get the wheelchair up. It just wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we was asking if we could take him through the hard camera side where there wasn't many people in the crowd and you right. could totally push somebody through there. Yeah. No, they they want to see if you could get on crutches and this that and Candido ain't gonna say no. Right. They yeah. want him to get in the ring, flip the pile, flip the finish. And he just had, I mean, just had surgery. Not like a week prior. I mean, a, not even 24 hours prior. Like the day before. And goes down there, walks on crutches, comes out, uh, flips the pile for us to win the world tag titles. Um, and and the, the earpiece of the ref, uh, Andrew, had went dead during the main event. Mm -hmm. So uh, he told us to take it home. We had three minutes to go home. We did it three minutes. We still had 11 minutes left live on TV. I didn't know that, yeah. but uh, Mike Tanay knew that. He come over, you know, he's getting he's getting fed everything. Sure. He comes over, grabs on Candido, swords up Candido. We we don't know what's going on. We're like, you know, yeah, we're we're selling everything, and, and I see Candido cutting a promo on this and that. And I'm pulling on Mike Tanay's pant leg, acting like I'm all fucked up. You know, I don't yeah. even know we won yet, and this and that. And Andy's cutting a little promo, and he's asking, you know, what what do you think about this chase? I'm like, who won? Who won? You know, like <laughs> so. You know, uh, Katie was talking about 97 screws in his leg and, you know, this and that. And screw you, Mike, today. We ain't got time for this. Like, we're going to party because my boys just won the world titles, you know, mm -hmm. da, da, da. And we go off, we go off like, uh, we probably got like four minutes left live on air. So we, we do like almost like a seven-minute promo right there. Make it to the back. Jeff Jarrett's going off, just fucking yelling at us. I don't, I don't know what, what? what's going on because we went off the air like early. We yeah. covered, but we went so to the He, he didn't know that the rest. He had no idea. Gotcha. Until Andrew comes back and Andrew's like, it's my fault. Like, uh, I saw Terry come out with his arms crossed and yeah. thought that was the go home spot. Mm -hmm. And Terry's like, I didn't know your your piece was dead. I was just coming out watching, yeah. you know? And, <laughs> and Andrew's like, I'm sorry. It was a misread. You know, this and that. And he's like, because my earpiece is dead. So, uh, and Harrison Storm hadn't even heard this yet because they're, you know, there's two different. Uh, um, interests at that point in time, you know. So we get in the back, like, and and we're all still, even though we just got bitched out. I mean, bitched out. Yeah, we're still like happy about everything. Like, the, just the way everything went, it, it, it all it was all smooth and stuff like that. And then the passing of Chris happens before our next yeah. show, and the and my problem with the whole thing is I had to read on the internet. No one told me. So really, yeah. So that's crazy to me. We. The way that played out on my end was uh, we were working on the Hardcore Homecoming show. And I was working up late one night working on the uh, the, uh, the the matches, the actual lineup. And Tommy Dreamer called. And he rarely called late. And this is about midnight, maybe 12.30. And I answered the phone and he's crying. And my first thought was like, something happened, this is before his grandfather died. He was real close with his grandfather. But he was like sobbing. And... Uh, like, did he get fired? Like, what's it was weird, strange phone call. And he said, Can you tell me if Chris is okay? I said, Oh, yeah, he broke his leg, you know, had surgery, banged up pretty good, but hey, he's fine. He goes, No, I don't mean that. He said, Can you tell me, did he die? And I went, What? Like, yeah. He said, Let me call you right back. So I hung up and I called Tammy. And she answered the phone, perfectly normal. Hello? I was like, Whew. It's just a rib, right? Yeah. I said, Hey, Tammy, it's uh, Shane. Is uh, Chris okay? She said, oh, uh, who is it? I said, it's Shane. And she said, oh, well, tonight, who is it again? I said, Tammy, it's Shane. It's Shane Douglas. It wasn't Tammy. It was her sister. Oh. I can't remember her name. Oh, gosh. It sounds exactly like Tammy on the phone. <clears throat> and then she said, like, at this point, I'm thinking, like, we're normal. Yeah. And she said, uh, uh, Chris got home at this time. He was eating a bowl of soup. And at 730, he looked up and collapsed in his soup and died 35 minutes later. And, dude, I'm not kidding you. It was like the room spun on me. Yeah. My wife came out, ex-wife now, came out of the, and I was standing, going, <gasps> I, I couldn't get my, my breath in. She thought I was having a heart attack or something, right? So now I had to call Dixie and Dusty. And from that point forward until the funeral, Dixie wanted one of the belts to go with him to, in his grave, uh, which I thought was a really classy move. Um, and then, like, but driving out there, you know, because of course they wouldn't fly me out. But uh, it, it was such a strange oddity because Chris had 
some seriously, all of us did, right? A really serious issue. And he had gotten himself clean. And to go in on the simplest of spots yeah. and have that freak accident happen. Yeah. I told Sonny, it was nothing Sonny did, it was nothing Chris did, it was just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a freak accident. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and Chris never ever thought that it was any kind of uh, anything about that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it was incredibly surreal. And then walking into that funeral home and seeing him laying there was was really freaky. They had come to me during this time, uh, Dutch and Jeff and uh, I forget that. was Russo there then. Yeah, he's still there. Man. Yeah, he's he back and forth. He, he left. He come back. Right. Uh, then he left again. Dusty had just come in. Yes. He went work with Russo. So, but Dusty was on his way out mm -hmm. to sign him back with the WWE and right. Russo was coming in, so you might have. So I, I think it was Dusty, yeah. if you think about it. Uh, he said, uh, we want the belts on him, I I'm pretty sure they said by October or November. <clears throat> and uh, so I, they, and D Dutch specifically asked me, Right out of storyline and see if you come well, off. We already had the belts. So. Right, but uh, they were but they were going to come off you, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we had to get them made, though, again. Yeah, right. Yeah, because, right. like, yeah. Cause, yeah. yeah. Oh. It's so confusing, which was yeah. TNA. Yeah. And so I wrote this whole storyline out. The one uh, thing I did. You're right, Russo was, was there, because he, he wrote my angle the next time coming back and didn't want me to talk about Candido. Mm. Wanted me to talk about how we had a new manger coming in. Yes. And I was like, who's a new manger? And they wouldn't tell us. They yeah. didn't know. They were trying to get Sunny, but they, they didn't think she was okay mm -hmm. to do it. And then they ended up giving us Jimmy Hart, but they didn't know that at the time. Right. And they was like, so we, we shot the promo and we was always like, these one take wonders. We just, you know, we right. just, whatever. Do it, yeah. yeah. We just fucking just talk like this. Like mm -hmm. just talk normal to, for us. I mean, we're, that's just what we do. And, uh, yeah, and he's like, uh, so we do this whole, you know, it's fuck Chris, we, man, we got tears in our eyes, sure. we're saying it, we're saying his name, you know, this and that, and they cut us off, and it's like, man, they're, uh, so Mike today's like, uh, they're wanting you to not say his name, and just talk about how you have a new mentor coming in, and I'm like, you realize this just happened, Yeah, like, this is real life, right. so like, me and Andy walked off, uh, Jeff had to find us, find out what was going on. Got a hold of Russo. Russo was the one that wrote that. Mm -hmm. So then Jeff went to him. Like they had this whole conversation. So this goes on for like a couple hours. Jeff comes back. And he's like, "All right, it's timed out. It's already put into the show. Like, can you please just cut what they need you to cut and let's just let's get past this." So we did exactly what we told what we told to do by Jeff. But in my head, like I was so angry at the sure. company yeah. for like, don't push him to the side. Right. Like, he he died for your company. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Like. Uh, I, and the fans, wrestling fans worldwide were aware of that. Yeah. So it's really silly to go out there and not talk about right? it. Right? We didn't have a tin bell for him. Right. Like, nobody coming on stage. Like, it was yeah. fucking Chris Candido. Yeah. I, I, as I recall at the time, God, it's been so long, but I... I'm I grabbed the microphone and concerned. Afterwards. Yeah. But, I mean, I think on the office side, they were concerned of liability. Yeah. Um, they should have. Which, yeah, but, you know, it, it's... You know, if there's a liability case, that has nothing to do with whether yeah. Chris was here or wasn't yeah. here. Yeah, like, That's a separate thing. Facts already happened. The right. facts, it doesn't matter. He, yeah. He's dead. Yeah. So let me talk about it. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, you could have built off that. That could have been, you know, like, like the, the things that go on today, like, you know, and, you know, God bless Briscoe, you know, for passing away just yeah. now, you know, yeah. and things like that. But, Crazy. but they, they, they made something to mean something to the crowd and things like that. And they, sure. they built off of it. I ain't saying that do that with us. Like, I, this ain't a Jay situation, but but it is Chris, it's yeah. Candido, and yeah. we should have been able to talk about it on on an interview. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, I was really upset about it. And Jeff Jeff gave me a live mic at the end of the show. We went dark, and I was able to talk. I was able to get dressed up again, go out and talk. Me and Andy, you know, and, and I cut this like they don't they don't ever give me a good mic. They don't ever give me anything to talk. You know this and that. Yeah. Like yeah. so, I finally get to speak about the suntan Superman and you know yeah. him, him beating his demons and overcoming everything. And yes. I just go on this whole you know deal. I'm I, I can you know you don't see like three rows deep, even though it's like not sure. a big deal. But yeah. that's you know just it's just your eye view. It's all mm -hmm. you can see. Man, I'm just watching just sob after sob, mm -hmm. and I was like, I got him, I got yeah. him. You know, and I was sure. just you know I I felt that Absolutely. energy level yeah. of. And I get in the back, and Jeff pulls the headset down, and he's like, you're right. And that's what blowing on TV. And I was like, man, yeah. it's, yeah. it's the only time Jeff ever said I was right on something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so when they fed the idea to me, I, the, the first thing, there were two things that they wanted. They wanted it to be very quick, and they wanted it to be uh, me be the mouthpiece for you guys. Yep. 
And if you remember, but there's all those discussions before the promos. I didn't want to do that. Like it was your guys' time, right? Like the same thing Chris was trying to do. Yeah, they didn't, yeah. we didn't get no questions on that. They you was you was already our mouthpiece without even knowing it. Like, yeah, they wouldn't come to us on anything. It's like I don't know, man. Silly. Yeah, you was already it. Well, you know, because again, by this point, you guys are well ensconced with the the, the TNA fans, uh, having been there from the beginning, and. This massive thing just happens with Chris Candido that everybody in the wrestling world is talking about. This was like the time to to do it, but to do it right, to do an actual old school angle. Because first of all, that's what I think would have been best to honor Chris. Uh, I, if you remember me talking about, it, I was adamant that it not just be like, okay, now that Chris is gone, they're going to be really successful. Uh, I, I was adamant against that, and that's why I wrote the storyline out to be. Dusty had told me, I think I was pretty sure it was Dusty, that it was going to be that either that October or November. And so I came up with, went home and wrote this elaborate storyline out. And if you remember, it was that like you guys were, I was working you everywhere, like just working like dogs, no matter how hard you did, it was not that was enough, a shoot. not enough, that was not a shoot. enough. Yeah. Yes. And that yeah. day you guys ran those. Threw me out of the heat in <laughs> fucking Florida. It was about 300 degrees. Made me out. truly run the stair laps. <laughs> like, only had a one camera shoot, then one six one shots with, the, yeah, with that one camera. I was like, fucking heaving. <laughs> Turn around to Andy, I was like, dude, is this really football <laughs> practice? Like, what the fuck is going on right now? They're ribbing us, dude. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and of course. 4-4? Four, four. I did a 4-4? 4-3, I thought. Was it a 4-3? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 4-3-2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, NFL's looking at me, though. NFL's looking at me. Uh, the, when it finally got down time for what was the cap off of that? To, to actually start turning you guys towards victory, right? You guys, at that point, were supposed to start. Yeah, we were supposed to, uh, well, we were supposed to go through your boot camp, shave our heads, is what we, was, yeah. we weren't told. First off, we read it on the internet first. Yeah. <laughs> and I started getting all these emails and I didn't know what I was getting I'm just reading I'm like please don't cut your hair please don't cut your hair and I'm like yeah I won't don't worry about it yeah. I was like fuck it maybe sometimes Andy would just post some vlog stuff back in the day and I you know it'd take me a while to figure out it's him you know and so uh I, I started reading the dirt sheets and I was like oh man maybe I am cutting my hair so I called Terry in the office I was like hey am I getting a remake and he's like do you want one and I was like no I don't necessarily want one he's like He's like, this ain't WWE Chase. He's like, Dixie, if you don't want to do anything, Dixie it won't make you do anything. So don't even worry about it. Whatever you're reading, don't even worry about it. So a few months go by. I mean, it's a while. Like, uh, and I'm, I'm at the L house, and I'm paying a $380 bar tab at 1.30 in the morning with Johnny Devine and Terry <laughs> Taylor. He touched me on the arm. I could turn around, and he's like, hey, we get up paying that. Can I talk to you? And I was like, that's weird. Terry's never here. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you can talk to me. So, like, give my, you know, pay my bill. And I'll never forget the price because I was like, man, I drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I sit down next to Terry. And he just starts in with this Buddy Landell story. And I'm like, I'm hammer drunk. And I'm like, <sighs> he's like, am I boring you? And I was like, yeah, I've heard this so many times from Buddy himself. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I, why are you telling me this? And he's like, why do you think I'm telling you this? I was like, you don't think I'm going to make it to the show tomorrow? It's across the street. I'll totally make it to the show tomorrow. And he's like, no, Chase, tomorrow they're going to actually cut your hair. And if you say no, they're letting you go. And I was like, you realize I'm in my 60-day clause and you guys haven't offered me another contract yet? Yeah. I was like, and I only made $11,000 last year? Jesus. And he goes, well, think of it as you made 11000 Cut your hair and let's see if we can make you more. And I was like, uh... Offer me yeah. more, and we'll <laughs> cut our hair. Right. And he goes, that's not how it works, Chase. And I was like, well, then I'm just going to punch you in the face because you fucking lied to me. <laughs> and Johnny Devine, of all people, reaches up and grabs onto my wrist. He goes, nope. I will like, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's going down. <laughs> so, like, he's holding me, like, from across the table, like, made it blatant. And, like, they're closing. Lights are on. They're, like, right. everybody's closing their bar down. And, and Raven's coming by at this point in time, Scotty. And I was like, hey, you cut your hair for this company, right? They pay you for it? He's like, I got five grand from cut my hair. I was like, five grand. I was like, I got eleven thousand dollars for the whole year. Yeah. I was like, give me five grand, I cut my hair. And he's like, that's not negotiable. I was like, yeah, you still get punched. Still get punched. <laughs> like I'm still getting held. You know what I mean? So like, they get me out. They get me out. They like, uh, Simon Diamond's like pushing me back and all this stuff. And I was like, hold on, just let me go shake Terry's hand. Let everything be okay. And he's like, don't do anything. I was like, I won't. I was like, this Terry Taylor. I wouldn't hit Terry. So as I'm walking around, everybody. Has to be a Walgreens shopping cart right there in the middle of the parking lot. 
as I'm walking by, I grab on that Walgreens shopping cart and I swing it one time and I let it go. And it hits Terry. Boom! Goes down. I was like, fuck. I never heard you. <laughs> yeah. So I just start cussing. I'm like, fuck. And anyway, I grab it to me. I'm like, Chase! <laughs> I'm like, snake. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, Storm's got, got me right now. And he's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And I'm, I'm like telling him. And he's like, oh, dude, fuck that. We're going to tell Bob. So like we go up knocking on Bob's door. As soon as he unlocks the door, man, we both of us kick this door open and knocks Bob down. Like I got Bob by the throat. I'm like, you motherfucker. I'm like yelling at him. He's crying. He's like, I didn't know they were gonna do that. I didn't know they were gonna do that. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, listen, just don't say no tomorrow. He's like, don't say he's like, you're a good talker, Chase. He's like, just just run them around the bin a few times. He's like, and, and give them different angles of how they can make you look different without cutting your hair off. Yeah. And I was like, I don't mind cutting my hair. I just want a contract. Right. I don't want you cutting my hair and being like, ha ha, bye bye. Sure. Yeah. Cause that's exactly what they had done. Uh, yeah. That's exactly what they had done. So, uh, so we get in there I, and, and Andy comes, I, I got there early, uh, earlier than Andy. So when Andy gets there, that's whenever the, the um, Ron and Don Harris grab onto us like, hey, uh, Jeff wants to talk to you. But when we go in there, it's a whole committee fucking sitting there, and yeah. just me and Andy. I think you were in there yeah. at this point in time, yeah, and they sure. they were asking us, they were telling us about cutting our hair, mm -hmm. and I was like, and I kept trying to talk, and they kept cutting me off, kept cutting me off, kept cutting me off, and Andy finally goes, "We ain't fucking cutting our hair," and I was like, "Oh man, I didn't get to smarten him up before we walked in," you know what I mean? Because he got there late, yeah, later yeah. than me, and they and and. and uh, Dutch Mantel like stands up and turns around and walks out, and then everybody started following him out, and I was like. That's the one thing they said not to say. Yeah. Don't say no. <laughs> God, so, yeah, I was like, you had one word not to say. One word. Just no. No. And he's like, he's like, dude, you try to talk. You kept trying to talk. So then you come to us, and you was like, man, I think they're letting you guys go. And I was like, uh, so as I was walking out, I thought we was getting let go. And Jeff goes, so you'll cut your hair, and Andy won't. And we already split off and went, different, went out different doors out of that. That production, yeah. production was one, two ends. Yeah, and I was like, uh, no, 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 I didn't say it. He's like, so uh, you won't cut your hair, and Andy will. I was like, no, that ain't how it went at all. He's like, who's gonna cut their hair? I was like, nobody's. I know nobody's yeah. cutting their hair. Yeah. I was like, I, so I was like, here's here's the deal with our six day clause, you know, this and that. He's like, so you're wanting more money to cut your hair? I was like, I mean, he's like, it's yes or no question. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'd like to have more money to cut my hair. And he's like, get the fuck out of my face and just cuss me like that. And I was like. Oh. Says the guy who held the WWF up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Had to come back and wrestle China. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got yeah. yeah. I wasn't thinking that at the time, but when he said, <laughs> you get the fuck out of my face, like those exact words. Yeah. Like loud. Like everybody's eating chow over here and everything. And I was like, my little butthole like puckered up. And I was like, oh, yeah. fuck <laughs> you. Yeah. yeah. I was like, dude, I'm fucking done with this coming, man. Like I take off. Like, tell Andy, get packed. Like, we're putting our stuff back in. Terry comes in. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, we have a lot of things going on. He's like, uh, Je Je you know, Jeff's wife's got cancer. And my wife's got cancer. And he's like, we we're not in the right mindset. I was like, I got problems, too. Yeah. I got all kinds of problems. I was like, I got seven girlfriends. I was like, they all found out about each other. I was like, we all got fucking problems. I was like, but I ain't bringing them to the table. Yeah. I was like, I fucking just wanted a contract. It's all I fucking wanted. And I was like, but... I didn't get it. I got a fuck you, get out of my face. I was like, so yeah. I'm getting the fuck out of everybody's face. And Terry's like, just hold on, just let everybody calm down. Like he's like, I he's like, let's let's bring this back together. And we didn't talk about it the rest of the day. Like uh that night, uh Jeff tried to sit me down at the double tree and Don Harris and Scott Steiner was standing there and I was like, oh, you think you're just gonna hold me down, cut my hair? I was like, dude, I will fight you both. And Don's like, I told you, Scott, he will fight. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's like, what's your problem, kid? You wanna do what's good for the company? I was like, I want a contract. That's what I think's good for the company. I was like, I made eleven thousand dollars last year and I ain't fucking doing it anymore. And, and man, Scott turns to Jeff, Jeff's the only one that chaired, me and Jeff. Like I'm sitting down and like Jeff's like nose nose with me. And Scott looks at Jeff and goes, well, God damn, you got to pay these kids. And I was like, yes. Yeah. It all worked out, man. So Jeff's like, you just can't tell me no. He's like, you said it loud in front of everybody. No. I was like, I didn't. Yeah. My tag partner did. I was like, I was trying to negotiate. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, but now everybody thinks they can tell me no. He's like, and I'm just trying to be the boss. And I was like, I'm just trying to get a contract. I'm yeah. trying to get a renew. And he's like, 
let's not shave your head. Let's just cut your hair so it looks like you did something mm-hmm. that the company needs. Yeah. So that's what we did. They, we went in. Oh, yeah. They, uh, Dixie picked out what haircuts she wanted for us. Mm-hmm. We got them done, and then they signed us to a forty thousand dollar contract yeah. after that. So we got a little bit more. Four times much more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it worked out. It worked out in our favor for that year. Yeah. But you know, I see all of that. Every bit of that could have been avoided. Hundred percent. If it was just run like a company. Yeah. Right. Hey, these kids are contracts up, and we need them to do something. Uh, the what was your take on the on the tail end of that? When we're in the ring, you guys, you finally knock me, knock my ass down, and as I'm leaving, the camera's on me. With as you yep. guys turn your back, it goes from the scared face to, to a little sinister grin. Yep. Right. Which was to be the opening. Like, okay, now I've gotten in their heads. They're going to be the heels I want them to be. And we never did anything after that. Right? Yeah, 100% killed us. So yes. Just killed us after that. But man, did you feel the energy of that crowd? Yes. Yeah. Dude. They were waiting for it. Because we had built to that. It was it was perfect timing for it. And it happened. Bam. Just the way, like, you couldn't have written it any better. Mm-hmm. And then, I, I think we lost right after that. Three times. Yes. The, the, the first one, you guys slid people over. And I was not saying anything in the office because of that kind of attitude in the office. So like, Terry Taylor... One time I remember... Uh, he hated me because of that shopping cart deal. <laughs> yeah. But he was having a tough time in the office, too. Like they were screwing with him on money and, and things that were going on. But he uh, uh, they put, he had said something one time, making an opinion on something, and, and he was talked to very, very condescendingly, at which point I decided I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I won't be talked to like that. And uh, So we'd sit there and play tic-tac-toe and stuff while they were all talking. And uh, so right shit around here. Well, they, they beat you guys the first week. I didn't say anything. The second week, I said well, if we, that wasn't part of the way that the story. At this point, the story has to go a different direction. And they beat you the second time. And then the third week was when the Dudleys came in. Yep. And you guys slipped the Dud- Dudleys over. And I said, man, Dutch had made some kind of a comment like, "God damn, those kids couldn't get over. They fell off a cliff." And I had <laughs> stayed quiet long enough, and I said. Those kids were supposed to be winning for the last three, two weeks. Now, third time today. And we were supposed to march straight to the ring, like, fucking, like, not putting over anybody. We were just supposed to be, like, machines yes. at yes. this point in time. Yes. Yep. That's, how, uh, that's how we yeah. scripted this out. That's how the whole thing was laid out. Right? Yeah, so I wasn't, like, trying to get, like, you know, heat or sure. pops or anything like that. I was yeah. just, I, I was in, you know, a boot camp mode. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. Well, Dutch, when he made that comment, I said, uh, you know, about... They were supposed to win. He said, I did Jaws my entire career and, uh, you know, was able to keep my heat. I said, well, a little bit different, Dutch. I said, first of all, I was there and I did a lot of times with you. I said, you had your heat going in. Secondly, after the baby face, you slide the baby face over, you get your heat back out. Yeah. We've done none of that with these kids. Nothing. And, and that was it. That was the end of the gimmick there moving forward, uh, which I, I always thought for them as a fledgling company where they were. Just like we did in ECW, it was, they were at the desperate point of having to make new talent, make the new stars that carry the company forward. And they were still trying to fall back on uh, all the other guys. And, and what it angered me in the office was when I found out, uh, as they were, you know, $40,000 contracts and uh, told uh, uh, Abyss that his contract was killing them and uh, things like that, then I find out they're bringing... And we signed the exact guys. same time frame, me and Abyss. Right. Same time frame. And they brought those guys in, all the WWF guys that were paying yep. them really big. Yeah. Money. And I thought, boy, you, you, these are the guys that have been here from the beginning, busting yep. their ass to build the place, yep. and now you're going to guess where we, yeah. we were at right now. Yes. And then we're bringing in these guys because we've got a little extra money to play with, and we give it all to them. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Right, man. It was so crazy. And what did you guys do after that? I was gone not long after that myself. I asked for my release. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy had heat. Uh, we flew into Virginia, uh, and he it was a 2 p.m. show. We didn't know it was 2 p.m., but, but I, I stayed at the hotel, and they woke me up, and I went. Andy, Andy got a girl, went with the girl, didn't make the 2 p.m. <laughs> bus. And we, I think we was in Norfolk, uh, Virginia, and it was another hour and a half drive on this bus. We had um, Dave Hebner driving us. Man, that's not the time of my life, man. I'm fucking, make, you know, talking shit to Earl and making fun of Dave while he's driving. So, like, that's having so much fun. Uh, and then we get there, and, you know, I'm texting Andy, and he's not texting back. So I call him straight to voice, and I was like, oh, shit. He didn't get his bag out at all. He didn't even got a charger for his phone. I was like, fuck. So Matt Bentley's with him, too. Well, not with him, but they both had chicks that they got. 
So they both come back to the hotel and, and meet around at the same time. And they was like, dude, I think they left us. So they had to go find a rental car. They got a hold of Kip. Kip's like, dude, we're already here. Like, yeah. So they went and got a rental car. They're like booking it. They, man, main events, me against the... Uh, so they changed everything around. It wasn't main event. It was supposed to be Jeff and somebody else. Uh, and it ended up being me against Diamonds in the Rough. Because we're waiting on Andy to get there. Right. So I'm out there working, 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 going for the tag with nobody there, waiting for this <laughs> to come, you know, because Andy's like, I'm 30 minutes out. And I'm like, dude, all right. His 30 is probably 20. He's not, you know, he's he's one of those guys that's right on time. So yeah. he, he'll get, he's coming fast. So I go out there to take a 20 minute heat, go for the tag, go for the tag, go for the tag, waiting for it, waiting for it. And I was like, he ain't coming, dude. We're 40 minutes in. <laughs> Fuck, I'm like, dude, I'm blown. <laughs> I'm already blown three comebacks. <laughs> I'm like, dude, fucking pin me, dude. <laughs> but, yeah, take the spine muscle from David, one, two, three, right? Get in the back. As soon as I walk back, fucking Andy comes to the door, man. <laughs> fucking drops his bag. He's all dressed. I was like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I'm glad you can make it. I was like, oh man, we got so much heat, dude. We got so much heat. So, so from that day forward, Jeff hated me, man. Yeah. Hated him. Like, uh, you know, I got the they was making the action figures at the time. I got two. They took away Andy's and gave me two. And I was like, oh man. So then I was like, oh, I got he was Andy now. Like, I got actually, I got two coming out. He ain't got. He's got zero yeah. now for missing one. One yeah. show that wasn't even a, it was a Hermie Sattler show. What even a, a TNA show? You know, really? I mean? Yeah, it was just an indie show that Andy had missed. Uh, crazy. And how long after were you guys there that you left? How long? Let me rephrase it. How long were you guys there after that? We had a resign. They come up right after you had you left and mm-hmm. I passed. Like left. Uh, we had a resign come up. Our contract went down. Terry kept trying to tell me how he could how it was going to be more. If we had house shows, but we had no house shows. Yes. And I'm like, I don't have any of those shows that you're speaking of on a calendar. Right. He's like, well, we don't have dates yet. I was like, well, I ain't signing for some make-believe dates. <laughs> I was like, I'm signing for what you're paying me, and you're taking my pay down. He's like, we're going to give you more dates. I was like, I don't know how you're going to give me more dates when there's no more dates on right. the calendar. Like, right. you, I was like, I know how this company goes. Like, speak, yeah. This, this yeah. ain't our first month. Like, yeah. you know, we've been yeah. here quite a, like six years at this point in time. You know what I mean? And he's like, uh, listen, it, it's going to equal out to be, you know, a better contract for you guys. So we went ahead and signed because um, we didn't have anything else going for us at the time. So three months, they give us these checks, 90 days, uh, these checks, and they take all of our indie pay. And if our, and, and if our indies don't add up to what they gave us, they take away our next pay until they make their money back. But if we make more on the indies as what they're taking, we get a bonus pay, which is the pay we already made anyways, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So they switched us from Bob Ryder being our agent to Bill Barron's, and Bill didn't book us on anything. We sit at home for 90 days. Yeah. So, yeah. So I went from... Incredible. Yeah. So so I, I started making $200, uh, $200 every two weeks, so $100 a week. Got, we got buy pay. So $400 a month. I'm going to Terry on the first one. I go, what am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. And he's like, well, cash it. And I was like, yeah. I go, that, I was like, dude, that's for two weeks. I was like, that ain't for the babysitter to get here right yeah. now. Yeah. And he was like, uh, well, get, get another job, get a side job. I was like, oh, oh, okay. You want your fucking two time world champions yeah. to go work and serve yeah. fries at McDonald's? He's like, I didn't tell you to go to McDonald's. I was like, what do you think I can do for a living? I was like, I don't have like, elaborate fucking yeah. college I come straight to TV from high school pretty much like I, it ain't like I went out and did much with my life before this so we're in this whole argument you know and I've already beat him with a shopping cart so <laughs> you know what I mean so so he's like yeah he ain't putting me over at all like yeah. uh, so I was like uh, so I left there asked for my release uh, Andy was already on suspension for the for the, the no not the man that was another one too I forgot about that <laughs> shit I don't know when that happened uh that was I was still there, so. Okay, yeah. So I got into it with Kid Cash over that one. Uh, Andy's Andy's gets stabbed, and Kid Cash like talks shit to him on the bus over to the Universal, and I was like, man, I was Andy no kid. So as we're getting off, like kids like still fucking on him, and I was like, hey, what's the deal? Because me and Andy didn't sit together in the locker room, yeah. so I was like, hey, what's the deal? He's like, man, he's mad. He thinks I got giant vine stabbed. He's like, fucking got he with me thinking I'm the one I got giant stabbed, and I was like. What's he know about it? Yeah. And he's like, I, I don't know. He's just 
he's mad at me. And the night before when I was checking in, he was like, where's your partner? I was like, he didn't stay at this hotel. He stayed at a different one. He's like, you tell him I'm looking for him when I see him. So I just, I thought it was, I mean, I thought they just had, yeah, you know, fucking, I didn't know it was like heat yeah. fucking, you tell him I'm looking for him. I didn't right, know it was right. like that. Right, right. So, uh, so anyways, like, Andy goes and sits in his regular place on crutches, and then Kid comes in the locker room and just beelines to him, starts right in front of everybody, starts talking shit. And Conan comes over and stops it, starts pushing him back, and then as soon as he gets to my seat, He's like, you got something to say? I was like, I ain't stabbed, motherfucker. Like, I stayed up, man, he fucking he crotches. And I was like, you pussy, how the fuck I beat your ass? So, my, uh, Monty Brown, like, picks me up there. Fucking, uh, his hat falls off. I catch his hat. And I was like, you lucky. You lucky you're bigger than me. And I put it back on his head as he's carrying me down like a little rag doll. I carry me down the little three steps right there yeah, yeah. from the trailer. I'm like, you lucky you're bigger than me. <laughs> so, he's like, Chase, today worth your job. And I was like, oh, that, that today was worth my job. Yeah, yeah. Today was totally worth my job. And I was like, man, they'd probably give me a raise if I beat his ass. <laughs> so, uh, so we went for a walk, and then we come back, and and kid uh, shook my hand on the way back, apologized to me, said he was he said he was in the wrong, and everything's cool. Like everything after that was like okay, um, but yeah, that was the whole deal. Like uh, Andy called me. I was in Indianapolis at a show. He's like, uh, I can't find the. I see the hospital. I can't find the exit. I was like, drive through the goddamn fence. If you're fucking stabbed, drive through yeah. the fucking fence. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. And I can hear, I can hear. Uh, Divine in the background, like, uh, uh, talking about his guts hanging out because he had been stabbed in the guts and, yeah. and, and, you know, like split up. Jesus. So yeah, he had 62 staples up his, and man, he was working out the next day at the gym and we get in the locker room and he pulled up a shirt and he was taking tone up clippers, trimming off his fat that was sticking out his, cause it, when he pushed so hard, his fat would come out the, the staples and he would clip it off with toenail. Yeah, sure. Pretty smart to do like this. Nothing you couldn't get an infection that way. Right? Well, I was like, it's, man, fuck, that's how you lose weight right there. Just trim off your fat. <laughs> <laughs> so, when this all this stuff is happening, after uh, Andy was was stabbed, and it, it was obvious at this point after the three jobs that after you'd gotten to that point, at least to me, that you guys that they had reconfigured something. Was there ever any interest? Uh, did you guys ever talk to Vince or? Yeah, we did. Uh, we were, our contract had come up. We went to Scott DeMore at the time for the renegotiation. He was the guy that just got put in uh, talent relations at that point in time. So we went to him uh, over Terry and he said, we just ain't got no money to give you. Here's Tommy Dreamer's number. Uh, he's interested. So we left the Universal Studios, we walk out and Bob's like, how'd I go? I was like, Man, they gave Tommy Dreamer's number. So there's no money for us here. And he goes, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he calls Jeff. He's like, tell me what you just told me. And I was like, oh, shit. So I repeated it. And Jeff's like, no. I was like, oh, dude, here we go. Yeah. So then we flew home the next day. Uh, Jeff calls me, asks me what was said. I tell him, and then Scott's on three-way. I didn't know. Scott's like, I didn't say that. I was like, who the hell is that? And I was like, wait a sec. Man, these little fuckers trying to catch me or something. I was like, dude, there's no way of me lying. I got Tommy's number. I never had Tommy's number, you know? So, so like, uh, I'm like, you did too. Like, you know, like, and just like super mad about it. Uh, at Scott. And going off on Scott on the phone. Hangs up. Scott stays in power. Yeah. I was like, dude, you just tell. Like, the heat push that got put put on me yeah. for telling the truth. Yeah. I should have just kept my mouth shut. Well, uh, Think back, not only to what you guys have gone through, but how many people they had done that with. There, yeah. Right? I mean, if you're going to, if I'm going to bring in talent A, B, C, or Z, I'm going to have in my head a pretty long term plan of what I'm looking for from them. Yeah. Not, man, maybe you got something this week and a couple weeks down the road. Nah, we don't have anything. Well, we'll try them again. Fuck you. Get out of here. Come back. It's. That's really how it was. Yeah, and we wonder how, you know, there's, you're pushing the pool. Yep. And, uh, Dixie, the first day they came in, you know, Dixie, uh, she's, you know, uh, the, the, she's got the package, right? So she had followed me down to the production, after the production, we did the green room, I had to go get my promos done backstage. And uh, she, a abbreviated version of the story, asked me, said her dad would like me to ask, her dad wanted her to ask me if I were to give him one piece of advice, what would it be as he starts this? 
And uh, so, look, Dix, I can give you a million pieces of advice, you know. And, and I'm in the process of getting dressed. So she's standing in the, the show starts, the monitor, remember where I was in the corner of yep. the green room. And, uh, you know, I'm finishing up getting dressed because I got to get on camera. And uh, it popped into my head. I, I said, uh, I guess it was just one piece of advice. I would tell your dad not to ever try to be WWF Junior or WWF 2. Yeah. Uh, you know, B, T, and A separate. I said, and then where I made my mistake was, or to her anyway, was I said, like ECW did, we went for the 18 to 49 male demographic and owned them. Right as I said that, she then said, why would we want to copy ECW? After all, they failed. And I don't really remember who's in the ring, but they did something and the crowd started chanting ECW. ECW. So she's standing over here in the morning, I'm out there like this, and I went, we failed. Like just kept looking back and forth, like oh, 25 years, years ago. Are you getting this, Dixie? Yeah. You know, the irony of this. And it, it really was like that. You know, there were, the office was no different than what you guys experienced anywhere else. And that's why I could tell it was, you can't have these people fighting those people this week. And then next week, those people fighting those people, but helping you. And it was just like, man, so I, I read the card and I'm like, did they watch what happened last week? <laughs> like, no. But yeah. I would see other people come up too with like deer in the headlights and I could just see their, uh, their facial expressions. I didn't even know what, cause I didn't watch it. So I didn't know what their storylines was right, either. Right. I just do my own and I'd be like, <laughs> Man, I go out to Universal and I'd sit on the curb, and then I'd I'd see like uh, like Lance Hoyt come out and he'd sit on the curb next to me. I was I'm like, Man, yours is bad too. And he's like, Oh, it's horrible. I'm like, Fuck, dude. Look at all these happy families. <laughs> Just push up their kids. Man. We're at Universal crying over here. You know what I mean, got fucking Jimmy out there with his little microphone trying to get people in there. I was like, Oh man, like. Yeah, we should be having the time of our lives right now. We're out there because we just knew it could be something more, and. It, I, and it, it was failing from the same people that killed it before. Yeah. And that's that's what my problem was. I was like, yeah, man, we had a multi-million, billion dollar person in charge at one time yeah. saying, here's all the money in the world. And yeah. it failed. Yeah. And now we gave you pennies and go, man, can you guys please do <laughs> something right. with this? Right. And you hired the exact same fucking people. Yeah. Do you remember like when Bob and the, when they all came in for like the first two or three months, Bob and uh, Todd. Her brother. Yep. They would bring their families in and they would go sit out and have fun with the show and everything. By the second or third or fourth month, whatever it was, uh, Todd came up to me at the end of the night, gave me his business card and said, we're not going to be around much anymore, but if there's ever anything you need or anything that concerns you, don't hesitate to call. <clears throat> well, I, you know, I, I kept the card. I still have the card at home probably now, but... Uh, you want to call it tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I tried that once. And it didn't work well. uh, but uh, let me do it. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, uh, you know, come from where I come from in the real world. If she's the boss and you're her brother someplace else, and I call you, yeah, on her, hot scotched her, yeah, like your chain of yeah. command, yeah. So he, yeah, big heat, yeah. right? So, yeah. but afterwards, like, like a couple years after I was gone, I called him and I said, you know. You, where you guys are, and I mentioned the number, right? And he didn't go, well, where'd you get that? That's not right. Uh, he asked me where I got the number and never said anything after that. So uh, yeah, I knew the number was accurate, $673 million. And uh, I told him, he was in a, a business luncheon, and I said, if you want to turn that company around and actually make money with it, give me a call. And I never heard from him. Uh, so he's like, well, and then you see how, how it played out. They, there was that revolving door. It was Russo's in, Russo's out. Yeah. Uh, Dusty's here, Dusty's gone, Jeff's here, he's got this person in with him, but that person's gone. Yep. And then when they started the whole WWF, yep. yeah, Bischoff, but Hogan in and Flair. That's what it was, yeah. I, you know, Dixie had asked me very about very specific people, and I had told her, you know, my honest impression of people and what my thoughts on them were. And uh, afterwards, remember when we were there, we could never get Dixie on camera. Remember, I, I, yeah. The omnipresent vision I have for in this role is like we would need somebody that wasn't a wrestler or somebody it, it had to be somebody in management and not often but every time we would go to her she would go I'm management not on air talent so a few weeks after I'm home I see her out there with Hogan doing yeah. crap yeah. getting 3D to the table and oh somebody got yeah. bit by yeah. the bug right? yeah. Yeah. it's uh, it's different when Hogan's putting you over <laughs> yeah. hey yeah, both for you. Dude. Yeah, it's <laughs> Monday would be great to run. <laughs> yeah, nobody's running on Mondays. Yeah. Uh, the uh, your final interpretation or impressions of, of, of TNA. 
I mean, you know, we, we the, the fans always hear the bad stuff. There was a lot, we used to laugh and have a great time when we were there. You know, a lot of the cross references that way. So, like, what's your takeaway now? So, so the beginning of TNA, like the first three years, maybe four. Man, it was a family. It was a close family. We everybody dressed in the same place. Mm -hmm. We all laughed. The, the younger people could learn off right. the tree and. Like you tell stories and stuff like that, people was learning. I was learning. Everybody was listening, and, and like everybody was just so close. Like in in just some little locker room, just learning and and hungry. Everybody going out and trying to not. I don't want to say top each other. We we had it all set right. Uh, things might not go go as planned here and there, but we had a goal, and it was the it was to stay on TV and to, to make it to a, a different product from. We went from uh, Wednesday night pay per views to uh, when we go to uh, Orlando. Yeah, but we we uh, Fox Sports to Spike TV. Spike, like yes. we worked our way up on all this, right? And and then once we, once that money started coming in, we started bringing in the people of WWE let go recently let go. There's that their ninety day yep. deal. We start bringing them in. And as soon as they come in, they didn't have to. They didn't have to go up that total pole. Right. They straight to the top and yeah. won world titles. And made us all look second, yeah. second best. Yeah. And then they start having their own locker rooms. Start splitting off from us. Yeah. And everything just started. I just I could I could read it. Yes. So I've never seen a sinking ship, but in my head, I was going, man, this shit's going down. The good times were over. It was a hundred percent in my head, and I and and I I didn't want to be that guy. At the end, you're right. Falling, so I didn't. I, that's not how I want to be known. So I, and I, all I want to do is fucking build that company. That's all. I want to be the Sting from from WCW that sure. didn't ever jump over. Yeah. Now I know he's jumped over now, but not at that point in time. Right. You know what I mean? Right. He was. Yeah. He was. He did. He made his name not off those smoke and mirrors, off his own self. And that's. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, not that. Not that I think he's the greatest in the world, but that's respectful. Yes. That he didn't. Sure. Ha he didn't need that. Right. To yeah. elevate himself there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you too, fucking from ECW. You was the man at one point in time. It's really cool to be on the ground floor. Yeah. And build something that's yours. A hundred percent. And that's what I want to do. I didn't want those smoke and mirrors behind me. I didn't want, I didn't need those lights and fucking right. sparklers and things like that. You sure. know, I, I wanted to be one of those guys that fucking built this, you know, company to be yeah. something better. Yeah, absolutely. And I was seeing it, I was seeing the trickle of it wasn't gonna be us. Yeah. We were not gonna be the stars. Yeah. In, in, a, in a much less uh, or much more mundane way, my take when I knew it was really screwed up was when the WWF guys were coming in, and they were all being put up at the, uh, the, the what was the big hotel? The Double, Double Tree. Tree. Yep. Yeah. Well, all the TNA guys were over at the Sleep Inn. Sleep Inn. Yep. And I Andy thought, had to sleep in. They gave me the Double Tree. Yeah. I wore my wing. Who'd you sleep with? Man, no. It was, it was weird how the negotiations worked out. They just, they and literally, when I went to check in and sleep in, they was like, oh, we don't have your, yeah. we don't have your name on the deal. And I was like, oh man, they fired me already. So I called Bob he's like, I got you in the sleep, or I got you in the double tree. Yeah. And I was like, shit, I got to carry my bags all the way over there now. Right. You know what I mean? So, well, you know, when you see that kind of separation, right, this group being treated one way, another group something, uh, another way, uh, you know, newsflash to all the uh, wrestling company owner wannabes out there. When you do something like that, wrestlers talk. Yeah. And, and you knew that literally because you could throw a stone from the one hotel to the other hotel. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a real bad look. It's the cancer we it always is. talk about in wrestling, right? Uh, you guys had busted your ass for six years there. And then you see people just... 100% all the way to the top. top. Yeah. They, they brought in race car drivers and we had to we had a job to them and I'm I'm your world yeah. champion yeah. jobbing to some race car drivers. Right. They gonna let me fucking drive around that track? Yeah. Four left turns. Yes. Like are they gonna let me? <laughs> nah. <laughs> fuck no. They're gonna. Right. I'm hitting that fucking wall. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> right. Then they brought in uh, um, best damn sports show. I had to wrestle the the linebacker from the Miami Dolphins and so I get there and Terry Taylor's like, hey, he wants to put you in a figure four. I was like. Do so you realize the team's not out there? Yeah. Like when those lights come on, it's a little different story yeah. when you ain't got that when when your helmet's not on <laughs> and that camera's right on your face. Right. He ain't gonna remember what a figure four is, number one. And number two, if he does, dude, you can you imagine what he's gonna do to my legs? 
that's a fucking shoot. I was like, we let him put you in the figure four before we go out there? And Terry goes, no, that hurt. I was like, fuck you then. <laughs> he put me in. I was like, you can't hit me with a fucking spear? Yeah. I was like, I'll put him over the spear. Yeah. Like, Jesus, four army or something. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. So they, they was like, oh, he, he, he really likes Ric Flair. He wants to do the, the figure four. I, I don't give a fuck who he likes. Yeah. I was like, I don't like a lot of football players. <laughs> I didn't ask to go on the field and fucking yeah. swear a touchdown <laughs> on him. Right. Like... Yeah. I'm fine with putting him over, but god damn, man. So they end up, they end up uh, putting Monty Brown with him and giving me Andy. Again, thank fucking God, man. Monty gave me the pounce. Yeah. I was fine with that, but I was like, man, dude, I am not taking a figure four from, yeah. you know, a 290-pound fucking Sasquatch, right. you know? Yeah. That doesn't always do it. Right. Yeah. And is, they gave us six minutes, 30 seconds in, so blown the fuck up, <laughs> couldn't spell his own name. I was like, oh, man, I thank God oh, I didn't yeah. get that figure four, yeah, man. no kidding, no kidding. Uh, yeah, but look, I, I always thought, you know, everybody, Chris and everyone else we talked to, I'd always thought that you guys were like the, like the biggest example in TNA of their absolute lack of professionalism and inability to prove that they could create somebody and get them over. That's the call mark for a promotion, yes. right? And they had it we, right there. Lost. We wasn't saturated with any other company. Yeah. You could have built us from the ground up. AJ had WCW. Christopher Daniels, mm -hmm. uh, WC, all those other people have been somewhere at some point in time, Ring of Honor, all this other stuff. You guys were homegrown. We were homegrown. Yeah. We, man, it, like, <sighs> it's a, I don't think, well, yeah, I don't want to make sense because I, I think TNA did, first of all, gave a lot of people jobs for a whole bunch of years. Uh, it, the heartbreak to me is that with the kind of money that was spent there and the talent that we had there, uh, I knew that that was the, the bones of a new company. Yeah. We could create something. I, but there were so many little things that just popped in my head as I said that. Uh, one, those things that you see and you go like, this company hasn't got a chance, right? Stuff like yeah. that. I was watching with you guys, but they had an X Division match. Christopher Daniels, AJ, uh, I, there were like seven, eight guys in the match. And it gets to the point, AJ's got everybody bumped down. He climbs the top rope, does the slow Randy Savage stand up. I was like this and bench and they cut the camera to three guys in the audience. And the guy in the middle is going like this. And you're boom. And it goes back up in the back. Like, what the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that was uh that was sort of That's what you fired that camera dude. Or not the camera dude, it's the <laughs> operator in the back. It's probably, it's probably Terry at the time. But James, I really appreciate you being here for this. For you fans out there, again, this is what happens every time you're around Chase. Man. You laugh your ass off till your gut hurts. Man. I wake up every Monday like this. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you being here, brother. Nah, man, have thanks for having me. Have you back anytime soon. Come back next time and watch Franchise's Friends right here. Chase Stevens and the Franchise. Love you guys.